Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another edition, I guess, of Virtual Vespers. I hope that this week for you has um, been about as good as it can be. I know as, as this sort of isolation and pandemic sort of continue on, uh, the days seem to, I don't know about you, but for me, they get uh, a little mixed up. <laughs> Maybe you forget what day it is or um, maybe you've woken up to another day at, at home and sheltering in place, or maybe you've been still going to work, uh, whatever it is. I'm glad that you have the opportunity to, to pause for a minute to pray with us here. And I, and I hope that your week has been well. Please know that I'm praying for you, praying for everyone in our church in, in these strange and weird times. It seems to be the only thing I can say these days is that these are just weird days. I don't know another word for it. Before we get to our uh, time of prayer and reflection, I just want to keep you updated, make a few announcements uh, about some things that are going on and what we're keeping our eyes uh, on right now. Hopefully, you have received either via email or the link here on Facebook access to our Holy Week devotional guide. This is Holy Week. It's an unprecedented Holy Week as all around the world, churches that usually anticipate so many special times of worship and service are unable to do that. But I hope that you've had the opportunity to check out that Holy Week devotional as a way to remind you of the, the uniqueness and the specialness of this week, but also as a way to keep connected with our brothers and sisters here at Williams uh, through the reading of some of their words, uh, through the knowledge that as you read and reflect, Others in this congregation are doing the same thing. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, or maybe you're not, on, you're not on our email list, you can find it here on our Facebook page. Again, even without an account, just like if you're viewing this without one, uh, you can find it on our Facebook page. Just scroll down, you'll see a link uh, to our Holy Week devotional. You click on that, it takes you to a, uh, a reader page where you can view it in a PDF format. It's a little different, uh, differently formatted than it has been in the print publications, but that's for your convenience for easier reading online. Uh, I wanted to make a, a, in that same vein, as far as Holy Week goes, a couple of announcements or, or just updates. It sounds weird to say announcements when it's just me sitting here in my office alone in the whole building. Um, but normally during Holy Week, we wouldn't be gathering together on Wednesday evening. Instead, we would be gathering tomorrow night for our Monday Thursday service. Uh, Monday, Thursday, especially in recent years, has become one of my favorite services as we not only gather together for communion and worship, but this very solemn and sacred time of, of uh, feet washing, foot washing. For obvious reasons, we won't be having uh, that service this year, but I hope you'll be looking forward to it next Holy Week. What we will be doing is rebroadcasting here on Facebook and on our YouTube channel a Good Friday Tenebrae service from one of our previous years uh, and Holy Week for that. Uh, normally what we would be doing is on Good Friday, we've been gathered together in the sanctuary for a service of shadows, a Tenebrae service, where we would read through the passion of Christ extinguishing a Lenten candle along, along the way, and finally extinguishing the Christ candle. Um, Obviously, we can't do that together this year. So we're going to do two things. We'll rebroadcast one of those um, previous year's services here on Facebook and on YouTube. And I'll post a document here on Facebook and maybe send it to those of you who are on our email list. Uh, it's from CBF, I believe. It's a, a, a document for how to, it's, it's a guide to having your own Tenebrae service at home. So you'll be receiving that. It's very similar to what we do when we're gathered together on Good Friday. But I hope if you receive that, that you'll use that. You'll be able to um, have a special time of worship, maybe with your family there in your home. But again, if you can't do that, we will be rebroadcasting uh, a Good Friday service here on Facebook. And by rebroadcasting, I mean we'll premiere it at a particular time, about 4 o'clock Friday. But you'll be able to access it all evening, uh, even in Holy Saturday. Uh, another thing we usually do in Holy Week is our sunrise service. Uh, again, one of my favorite services is it's very, very simple, 
very stripped down, but also very meaningful. We always have it over in the cemetery. We watch the sun rise uh, over the over the trees, through the crosses, and have uh, just a few moments of song and prayer, uh, reflection. And in recent years, we've come back over to the church for breakfast before going home to prepare for uh, worship later. We, we won't be doing that, obviously, again this year. Uh, we considered having sunrise service and trying to find a way to do that in a socially distancing appropriate fashion. But I, I just don't think we'll be able to do that. And there are restrictions on gatherings of 10 or more. And so we'll be, uh, again, rebroadcasting uh, one of those services. Chris Cheatwood can't give that guy enough props in this, uh, this strange time that we're in. Chris has been recording these services for a few years now, has them ready for us to, to revisit and to share again. So um, hey, I, let me just say a word too about Chris. If you get a chance, send him a note, tell him how much you appreciate. He's been helping us. Last week we recorded sermons. We recorded scripture readings. He's been helping me put together uh, worship services and all these things you see uh, happening online. So shoot him a note, tell him how much you appreciate him. Do that for Nikki. Nikki's been knocking it out of the park with our kids and our youth, getting them all the resources they need for Sunday school, for children's church, just been doing a great job. Peggy's been here in the office, uh, working hard to make sure all that the wheels aren't coming off and she's really been doing a great job with that. And let me also ask a special word of prayer from Mike, uh, Mike Duncan and, and his family at the loss of his dad. We just we love you, Mike. We're praying for you guys. And uh, it's a strange time where we, we all want to be, close. We want to hug. We want to be there with you, but know our prayers are definitely with you. So those are the things I wanted to talk about as far as our services this week. Uh, we'll be rebroadcasting a Good Friday service, rebroadcasting a uh, Sunday morning uh, service or a sunrise service. And then for Easter worship, there are two things I want to tell you. One, we're going to be sending you another, what I'm just calling for short, WWW, but not really much shorter than Williams Worship on the Web Guide. That will have a sermon from me, but also Pat Barker uh, has recorded some some songs that we'll be putting on there. Pat's been Pat Linnell been at work uh, over in Georgia sending us songs. Those songs you see on the Williams uh, Worship on the Web Guide. Pat and Linnell have been putting those together, working on those, and now Pat's recorded some songs uh, him singing and in an attempt to sort of make things feel more normal. We've just, we've discussed. So you'll see some of that. You'll see a new sermon. We'll have uh, some people reading those videos, make a little less text and a little more uh, able for you to navigate. Um, hopefully those things are working. If you have any feedback about the worship guide, feel free to send us a message here on Facebook and let us know. Also, another word about worship. I said this last week, but I want to say it again. If you would like to record yourself, maybe on your phone, maybe on your computer, if you'd like to record yourself, uh, reading some scripture, saying a prayer, or or even if you'd like to make a just a video for us to share on our page to say, hey church family, it's me, I'm praying for you, I'm thinking about you, we miss you, can't wait to be together again. Record that and send it to us here on Facebook. We'd love to share those things, let people know uh, how our church family is doing and what's going on. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of worship in that way, please feel free to do that. And if you can't do that or want to know how, send us a message here on Facebook. I think that'll be a quicker way. I get those messages. Our, our staff gets it. If you send it here to uh, through our page here on Facebook, we'll be sure to see uh, what's up and what's going on. Uh, another word is you all been doing a great job uh, in this interim with our uh, giving, whether it's been online giving, which we're still trying to iron out some kinks with PayPal and our bank, but but with that's been been great. Uh, but also, you've been bringing your tithes. This is a way to get out of the house, I think, to come up to the church, drop it off on our drop box, or if you want to mail it in to us. You've been doing a great job with that. Keep that up. We, we appreciate that as we continue. Knowing we're not gathering for worship and services, we're still trying to do the things that we believe Christ has called us to do as a church. So thank you uh, for that. And also just a reminder to, to be in touch with your, your family deacons this week, or if you need me, if you need something, if you just need to, say something to me give me a shout it's hard for me to to know where to begin and who to start talking to i'm checking in with our deacons so if, if there's something you uh need or would like to know feel free don't hesitate to contact me your family deacon a member of the staff or even again through this facebook page it's a great way uh, to get in touch with folks 
And the final thing, just as far as updates, I'm keeping an eye on um, just the timing of all of this. Um, people ask, when do you think we're going to be able to do this? When do you think we're going to be able to come back together? And, and quite honestly, friends, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm hopeful and optimistic that we'll be back together uh, in, in in May, but but it's really hard to say. Uh, you know, when we first said we were uh, suspending services, we thought we'd be back together last Sunday. So we're trying not to make any definitive date. We are putting plans in place as far as preparing things for services and worship. We have those lined up through the end of this month. We hope to continue that as long as we need to. We don't hope to continue it, but as long as we need to do it, we hope that we'll be able to provide that uh, for you um, so that you can stay connected to your church and still feel um, that this this part of worship as you're part of this faith community. Well, that's about all I have as far as updates and those sorts of things. If there's anything, any questions you have, any contact you need, again, don't hesitate to call me, or call the church office and leave a message. Somebody's checking those uh, daily. Or send us a message here on Facebook and let us know. Uh, but as we get into our time now of prayer and, and worship, I want to begin with just a, a prayer of invocation to invite Christ's presence into our homes, into this space uh, that we're sharing together online. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come together virtually uh, for prayer and reflection. We continue to lift each other up, Lord, as we are in this weird and strange time. You know, we trust that you are in control, that you are, God, the one who is there uh, to, to listen to our prayers, to call us back together when the time comes. We trust, God, that even in times like these that are confusing, when we don't know which way to turn sometimes, and God, you are still there, still calling and still guiding us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence in this time and the many ways that you connect us all together. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I want to uh, continue as I did last week, even though I know this is a little more um, of a unique time in Holy Week. But I want to continue reading the Psalms that are selected for the Sundays on these virtual Vespers. And, and tonight I want to read from Psalm 116, now verses 1 through 2 and then 12 through 19. Psalm 116, beginning in verse uh, 1. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. For our prayer tonight, for our prayers this evening, are the same thing that I, I've been doing over these couple of weeks as sort of a guide for us to pray together, uh, to pray in sort of three phases. Uh, one, to pray for the church, pray for our church here. Uh, we don't know how long we'll be apart. We don't know how long uh, this will go on. So we, we pray for our church as it as we try to figure out do how do we keep going in the midst of all of this. As much as maybe you enjoy these things, and I can honestly tell you I'm not the biggest fan of looking at myself and talking to myself, uh, we still have to find ways to sort of navigate how to be church in this time. So Pray for your church and, and your staff and how we might better minister to you in this strange and unprecedented time. Nobody is experts in this way of doing ministry right now. But also praying for the church universal. Churches, again, especially this Holy Week, a very important time, the most important time, arguably, in the church calendar as churches are meeting across the world for the first time virtually, for the first time 
uh, not meeting during this time, and especially on Easter Sunday. So be praying for the church and then praying for others. And that others can be anyone. That may be someone you know in your life right now. We, we know some people in our church family who've lost loved ones, not related to COVID-19, but they've still lost them in the midst of all of this, which makes grieving difficult. It makes, um, it, it makes everything difficult. Uh, to be praying for them, to pray for those who who are still out there serving and working in the midst of this, putting themselves perhaps in in, in danger, in the risk of contracting the virus, or at least in in, in danger of something else. I don't. Know. I mean, it's 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 difficult. Praying for those who are staying at home, praying for those who are trying to navigate how to teach their kids virtually at home. Just to pray for others. There may be others in your own circle that you need to pray for. And then finally, don't forget to pray for yourself. This is all weird. This is all strange. This is all new. And if you're watching this, if you're here, you're doing good. You, you, you don't, don't give in to whatever you might see on the internet, on social media, on daytime television, whatever it is, that says you ought to be doing this or doing this. Maybe you've got friends who are just reading books like crazy, uh, watching new shows, learning new skills, cooking fabulous meals. Hey, good for them. Maybe you're at a place where, you know, you did good to get up because it's just so exhausting, so different. Pray for yourself. Take a moment to breathe and just pray for yourself, for those in your house and for those in your family. So remember, we're going to pray for those three things. Pray for the church, pray for others, and then take some time to pray for yourself. Let's do that now, then I'll voice a prayer for us, and, and I'll offer a few words of reflection and then uh, a benediction. So let's pray together. Lord, again, we pray in this unprecedented moment, in this strange season. And God, we pray together from our homes, from our cars, from our offices, wherever we are. And whenever it may be, whether we are praying live together now or through recording at some other time. God, we unite our hearts and minds together to pray for one another as your church, to pray for our church here at Williams, to pray for the church around the world, especially this week, Lord, this holy week, as services that so many of us look forward to are canceled, as, as gatherings are canceled, or as this special time of worship is rescheduled, postponed, or put off till next year. Yeah, we lift up your church here and around the world. Lord, we pray for others, our neighbors, our friends, and those who we haven't been able to see in such a long time. Perhaps, Lord, now we realize how much we may take their presence for granted. God, we lift them up to you. Especially, Lord, our health care workers, those who are in need, Lord, of our prayers and support now. Lord, those who are working every day to make sure that that we're able God to be safe that we're able to even be comfortable in this time for those seen and unseen those who make the news and those who don't God we lift them up to you and just pray for all those others in our lives God who are in need of prayer now and Lord we take a moment to pray for ourselves this time strange as it is will inevitably take a toll on us spiritually, emotionally, maybe physically, Lord, as we are sheltering in place, as we're unable to get out, maybe, Lord, as our minds continue to wander. But God, we pray that your Holy Spirit be with us and remind us of who you are and who it is you call us to be and Lord, make us mindful that this will all be over and there will come a time when we will be together again we will be back to some semblance of normalcy. 
back to a time when lessons have been learned. But Lord, when we are back together to worship, to pray with one another, to love on each other. So we lift up the church, we lift up others, we pray for ourselves. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I, I wanted to look at these words from the psalmist for just a moment uh, in our time together tonight. Because I thought I found them interesting. It's the the psalm for Monday Thursday. And in my Bible, my little black NRSV here, the subtitle for Psalm 116, Thanksgiving for Recovery from Illness. It's a little on the nose, isn't it? I thought about that because this is clearly the psalmist, maybe David, who knows, but the psalmist writing in praise and thanksgiving to God after recovering from an illness. Now, it's not COVID-19. It's, it's probably not even the flu for this ancient person. But their bouts with illness were much more serious than ours because they didn't have pharmacies and common med or, or modern medicine, and not especially not the ready. But I, I, then I started thinking about how often in my own life when I've had an illness, whether it's a, a day-long bug or whether it's been recovering from something like wisdom tooth surgery or something, how in the midst of it, in, in spite of my rational brain telling me, you, you'll be over this in a day or two, it'll be fine, things will go back to normal, your mouth will quit hurting, you won't be here in this special room in the, in the house, if you know what I'm saying, uh, this much uh, for very long, no matter how rational my brain is to tell me that that's the truth, when I'm in the midst of it, when I'm laying in the bed with, you know, coal packs on my face, trying to get the swelling to go down, saying things I never thought I'd say in my life, like I'm tired of eating chocolate pudding. Or whenever I'm in the middle of, of some other illness, there's some part of me that maybe the theologian Paul Tillich would call existential anxiety. This idea that, that I may not may not make it through this that if I do get out will something be different will something be changed and I can imagine right now no matter how how rational it is to you that there will come a day when you won't have to shelter in place there will come a day when you can go back to Baja you can go back to to doing the things you like to do and you can be back in church together again sitting not at your computer screen watching recorded uh, videos but in the sanctuary or in your Sunday school class no matter how rational that is in the moment surely there's some anxiety about it and here's what the psalmist says that that I, I love he begins the psalm I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. That in the midst of his illness, in the midst of his distance, in the midst of his isolation, the psalmist says the thing that, that sparks my, my love of the Lord is the fact that God listened. Maybe in the middle of this Holy Week, or maybe in the middle of all of this pandemic, this social distancing, maybe you just need somebody to listen. Maybe you just need somebody to listen uh, because the kids are just driving you crazy. Let's be real, right? Maybe you need somebody to listen because you just want to get out of the house. You want somebody else to talk to. You want you want somebody to listen to your voice rather than your voice being the only one you hear. Maybe you just need somebody to to listen, something to listen. Because when your rational mind tells you it's all going to be over and it fails in the midst of that anxiety, you need somebody to listen. 
Well, the psalmist says God does. That God listens. That when we're confused, when we don't know what's going to happen, when we're anxious, that God listens. And I know it's easy, I think, to, to pour our energy, to pour our thoughts into wild ideas and theories about things that are happening or, or to give in to our, our absolute worst case scenario fears. But the psalmist says, even in the midst of all of that, when he thought he was facing death, what was it that made him love God all the more? God listened. So what do you have to tell God in the middle of this Holy Week, in the middle of this this pandemic and sheltering in place? What do you have to tell God? Whatever it is, I believe, I trust, just as the psalmist did, whatever it is you have to tell, God will hear and God will listen. I hope you have a good rest of your Holy Week. I invite you again to tune in to see our rebroadcast of some of those services that we'll be doing Good Friday, our sunrise service. And we will be broadcasting uh, this Sunday's new um, full service, uh, or most of the service, our sermon and scripture readings here and on YouTube. But also you'll find those uh, when you receive your Williams Worship on the Web uh, interactive worship guide. My prayer for you as you go out for the rest of this week, or maybe as you're sheltered in place, is that when you find yourself needing something to say, needing to just have someone listen, remember, your clergy are here, your ministers are here, your family's here, your deacons are are here, but always God is here, and God is listening. So as we end our time uh, of this virtual Vespers uh, together, let us end in the way that we normally do on Wednesday evenings, um, praying the Lord's Prayer together. So would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.